Good morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, August 24th. We do have impacts in terms of gusty winds near 30 miles per hour and low humidity across the northern tier of Nevada, far northwest Utah, and southern Idaho today. That area expands a little bit tomorrow to cover a bit more areas further south. So two days of good winds and low humidity continuing to dry out the fuels. Uh, no significant impacts as we head into Monday, but we will be remaining seasonably warm and dry. Overall, looking at precipitation, not much the past 24 hours. A bit across the uh, Uinta Basin, uh, just uh, one or two strikes here on the lightning map. Uh, new fire starts, IA is pretty much light. Uh, we did have one in larger fire here uh, down in southern Nevada. Otherwise, uh, new fires in the red circles, existing recent fires in the yellow. Precipitation bone dry for most areas the past seven days, the exception parts of the uh, uh, Salmon Chalice Forest uh, and uh, going into parts of western Wyoming where they had some uh, light to locally moderate amounts. But you can see on the percent of normal uh, for the week, basically 0 to 5 percent of normal for just about the entire area. And that's the reason why our ERCs have uh, dried out considerably. A lot of reds and dark reds, 80th to 90th percentile come down a bit here where we had some precipitation up here in uh, some of the higher terrain of uh, uh, northeastern Idaho, at least uh, our portion of it, but that will be drying out over the next couple days as well. Our 10-hour fuels representative of grass and light brush show critical levels of 3 to 4 percent where you see the areas in the red. And looking at some of our ERCs here and areas of concern which will have winds the next two days up here in the eastern Snake River Plain, they've come down a little bit but still above normal ERCs for this time of year, uh, normal being the gray, record levels being the red. Uh, similar story here in northwest Utah, above normal, just above normal for this time of year, which is typically the driest time of year. Of note, the Arizona Strip and the Monuments area of far southern Utah at record levels for this time of year, more on the norm for the driest time of year, which is usually the end of June. Live fuel moistures also have dipped down below 100%, down near 75% in parts of uh, uh, the Snake River Plain of Idaho, as well as parts of northern Nevada and uh, northwest Utah. So now the sagebrush becoming part of the fire environment. Uh, not much in the way of cloud cover through here, front coming through, so temperatures have cooled off a little bit, but the moisture is exiting our area. The tight packing of these height lines indicates a strong westerly or west-northwest gradient, uh, which will affect some uh, winds across uh, the northern portions of our area where fuels are dry enough. So we see the weather map for this afternoon here on the left, and there's those tight height lines, drier air pushing in, deep monsoonal moisture well to the south. And here we have high risk for wind for far northeastern Nevada into parts of the of southern Idaho and into western Wyoming where things have dried out as well. We'll see gusts of uh, 25 to 35 miles per hour in these areas. On the left is the winds of particular note. The enhanced winds uh, in the oranges will gusts will be approaching 30 miles per hour. And you see the humidity levels again in the teens in most areas. Uh, similar story on Sunday, a bit more of a northwest component as opposed to west, but uh, this belt drags a bit further south, so we have a larger extent of winds, um, and similar high risk has been carried out by Rocky Mountain geographic area a bit further to the east. Um, looking at these winds, tomorrow should be a windier day. Not only do we have enhanced areas in the orange, a gust near 30. Some of these purple shades through here, we could see gusts uh, 35 to 40 miles per hour. Humidity again in the mid to upper teens in the north, low teens in the south. On Monday, that gradient still exists to a certain extent. I notice how much we've dried things out with those breezy, dry conditions. Uh, winds diminishing, maybe gusts near 30 through here, going towards the Uinta Basin. Uh, humidity levels again remaining mostly in the teens. No precipitation over the next seven days. And as we go into Tuesday, high pressure building in. The winds diminish, but we get hotter, we get drier. So notice the uh, dryness levels going to the brown in all areas. Now on Wednesday, a little bit of a four corners high pushes up some a piece of monsoonal moisture. This is not the deep uh, flooding monsoon type, but um, isolated lightning and thunderstorms possible to some of our driest areas down here. I'll have to watch for the possibility of new starts through here as we go into the middle and latter part of the week. And this will be on Friday, hot and dry everywhere. 
Uh, you can see maybe a little bit of moistening here with some higher humidity in the afternoon thunderstorms, but we'll have to monitor the possibility of new starts in some of these areas, which is quite unusual for this time of year. You can see the precipitation, just a few pin drops through here, so not something that's going to kill fire season off, but something that will produce more lightning over critically dry fuels. Our 8 to 14 day outlook shows above normal temperatures, much above, especially across the western portion of the Great Basin. Shows a push of monsoonal moisture coming into our southern area, so perhaps a bit more in the way of lightning, and maybe by then some wetting rains we'll see as we go into the first week of September. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.